Hello everyone, welcome to Lukman IS. Today we are going to have the Hindu newspaper analysis dated 2nd of January 2022. And today we are going to understand some important articles that were there in the newspaper. So let us quickly look, uh, take a look into these topics that were in news today. Okay, so the first topic that we are going to talk about is how will revised IPO rules affect the market? IPO stands for Initial Public Offering. So Initial Public Offering is an instrument of the financial market and recently the Securities and Exchange Board of India has revised the IPO rules. So in this article we will talk about like how will the revised IPO rule you know play role in the financial market what effect will it have on the investors and how the market dynamics is going to change and after then we will talk about the second topic uh, that is about konya groups in nagaland slam extension of afspa okay so in this article we will talk about the konya tribe so konya tribe are the tribal people that reside in the state of nagaland recently 13 members from this tribe have been killed by the armed forces and these armed forces personals are under the cover of armed forces special powers act so the people from nagaland are you know demanding that the armed forces special powers act must be repealed and recently the ministry of home affairs have not repealed the act but like they have extended the armed forces special powers act for six months so we will understand about recent development with respect to this topic and the third topic that we are going to talk about is united states russia looking for a breakthrough okay so as you know that united states and russia are some of the biggest countries in the world and they are they uh, they are historically you know one of the superpowers and they have had cold war between them okay and now recently some you know some geopolitics is there in play because of ukraine okay and nato so nato stands for north atlantic treaty organization so it is an organization where there are members from european countries like you know most of the european countries are members of it including you know the united states of america, uh, america canada france germany etc and on the other hand we have russia so recently there were reports that like united states of america is willing to extend the membership of the nato north atlantic treaty organization so with this like in this respect there has been a lot of things that has been happening so we will understand more about this topic in in this article today and it is, is important under international relations with this we will move to the next topic which is fourth topic it says a strict reminder to the sundarbans okay so as you know that sundarbans tiger reserve or sundarbans forest is located in the state of bangla uh, like you know west bengal and it has some of its uh, the sundarbans has some of its portion in india in the state of west bengal and other portions are there in bangladesh so bangladesh is a different country so recently sundarbans were in news because of you know man animal conflict the tigers from sundarbans area have you know come out of the forest and they have ventured into the human habitated area so we will talk about you know recent developments related to this topic okay and the fourth uh, fifth topic is about dark genome so this is a topic which is important for science and technology and this topic is important for the prelims exam so in this topic we will understand about what is dark genome where it is found and what is the recent development related to it with this we will move to the next topic that talks about prehistoric pollution so in this article we will understand about what is prehistoric pollution and at the same time we will take a quick look into geological time scale okay and at last we are going to solve some questions from the prelims exam so with this 
let us quickly move into the first topic for the day okay so this is the first topic this says how will revised ipo rules affect the market what do the new savvy norms state on preferential allotment and price band who benefit from the changes okay so this article is essentially about the you know stock market it is essentially about the securities market okay so this particular market is being regulated by a regulatory authority in india the name of the authority is securities and exchange board of india and this particular authority not only you know regulates this particular ma market but also it frames certain kind of policies rules regulations to look into the affair of this particular market okay so here in this article we will understand about what is initial public offering and what are the new norms of service that regulate the initial public offering okay so this article talks about that the securities and exchange board of india on tuesday came out with some fresh rules for initial public offerings okay so the securities and exchange board of india has come up with some fresh rules with uh, you know related to initial public offering so we will understand about what those rules are we will understand how those rules affect different stakeholders and at the same time we will also talk about why did sebi came out with the new rules okay so what was the trigger point that has you know uh, that has made uh, sebi to come up with uh, the recent rules okay so the the new rules will oversee how companies price their shares how they use the money that they receive from the investors how much of their stake promoters of a company can sell during the uh, during an ipo and how soon anchor investors can sell the stakes they picked up before the ipo okay so these rules are going to affect these many parameters that are listed over here okay means like it is going to affect how companies you know set the price of their shares and at the same time how these companies use the money that they receive from the investors through the initial public offering and it will also look into how much of their stake promoters of a company can sell during an ipo promoters are of a company are those people who hold majority share in the company means like you know they they hold uh, the maximum amount of share so a promoter can have you know 20% share in the company he can have 50% he can have you know much more in this case like you know for our understanding we will understand we will consider a person to be a promoter of a company if he has you know more than 50, uh, 20% stake in that particular company so during the time when the initial public offering uh, is in place so how much of the holding uh, holding of a you know promoter can be issued at the ipo okay and how soon anchor investors can sell the stake they picked up before the ipo okay so here now let us understand what are these new rules okay so according to the securities and exchange board of india the new rules okay the new rules are the price bands of an ipo okay means like you know according to the new sebi rules the price band of an ipo should be set in such a way that the ceiling price is at least 105% of the floor price okay here the securities and exchange board of india has mandated that the ceiling price of a share and the floor price of the share should have certain you know differences means like there should be some gap the ceiling price should be at least 105% of the floor pricing okay then secondly the companies will not be allowed to use more than 35% of the money that they collect through ipos to fund the purchase of other businesses unless they offer sufficient details means let's consider there is a company that is issuing ipo okay ipo means initial public offering by issuing ipo these companies are raising fund and using those fund they can you know invest you know uh, in their businesses but at the same time some companies are issuing the ipos they are getting the money and using that money they are purchasing share of some other company 
okay so here the sebi com comes into play and sebi has regulated that like if you issue shares and the money that you are receiving only up to 35 percent of this money you can utilize for purchasing the share of some other company okay or to take over some other company you cannot use more than 35 percent unless you give sufficient details to the sebi uh, for their satisfaction they, uh, that like you know it is not anti-competitive or it is not violating the norms of the SEBI okay now thirdly the promoters with a stake of over 20% in a company cannot sell more than half of their stake in an IPO okay so those promoters who have more than 20% share in a particular company they cannot sell more than 50% of uh, their shareholding in an IPO means like if let's consider there is a company it says it has valuation of 100 rupees there is a promoter or uh, you know there is a person uh, who holds the share of that particular company up to the level of 20% or beyond 20% so they cannot I mean like you know issue uh, uh, like they cannot sell uh, sell their uh, you know shares through ipo more than 50 percent of this amount means like more than 10 percent of this thing they cannot share i mean like you know so they have 20 percent shareholding so more than 10 percent they cannot uh, sell okay so it can vary from person to person a person can have 20 percent shareholding a person can have 40 percent shareholding so out of the shareholding that they have they will not be allowed to sell uh, you know sell or uh, or list you know more than 50 percent of the holdings that they have with the company then at lastly anchor investors will not be able to sell more than half of their shares before 90 days from the date of ipo okay so those investors like who have you know majority shareholding they are considered as anchor investors so anchor investors are also not allowed to sell more than 50 percent or more than half of their shareholding in an ipo within a period of 90 days and earlier this period was 30 days okay so according to the new rules this period has been increased to 90 days okay earlier it was 30 days and here this is the you know logo of securities and exchange board of india in hindi it is known as bharatiya pratibhuti or Binimai board okay so it is known as securities and exchange board of india so with this we will understand little more about this particular article okay so why has sebi come up with these new regulations so we will understand why did sebi come up with these regulations okay recently it has been witnessed by sebi that around the world the i mean like you know sale and purchase of of the ipo has increased to a greater extent and it has been noticed that within a very short period of time many companies in india were able to raise you know millions and millions of money uh, you know dollars or or you know millions of rupees so i mean like so there are some you know associated risk i mean like people have concerns like you know something uh, something uh, if it is not regulated properly okay something may happen that may hamper the economy at large later so that's why the securities and exchange board of india has you know come up with new regulations so that it can have proper you know regulatory framework for regulating the securities market in india okay so this stock these stock markets across the world have witnessed a boom in ipo offering with the record amount of capital being raised by companies in india alone capital worth over 1 trillion rupee has been mopped up through ipo this year okay so in india itself like you know within uh, within a time period of one year more than 1 trillion rupee okay more than 1 trillion rupee has been you know uh, raised by different companies so this is a cause of concern because like you know if a turmoil happen if something happens then you know most of these money will be taken out by the investors and the economy you know uh, will face certain problems okay so that's why so it is natural for both the number and the size of the ipos okay to rise during a bull market 
so we need to understand what do we mean by bull market okay bull market is a time period when it is expected that the prices of share of a particular company is going to go high okay so let's consider there is a company that is making huge profits so investors from outside they can uh, they can speculate that the price of share of this particular company may go high in the near future because this company is performing well it is able to generate you know huge amount of profit so that's why what what investors do investors try to purchase shares from this particular company as soon as an IPO is listed as soon as an initial public offering is listed or a follow-up public offering is listed by this company okay so the tendency of the investors to purchase the shares from the market as soon as the shares are released is known as bull market means like in a bull market like people speculate that like you know market is performing well uh, we are uh, you know going to get huge profit so they are willing to invest money so during a bull market it is natural that the number of shares that are being issued okay or number of IPOs that are being listed by different companies are going to go high and at the same time the valuation of these IPOs the value of each share is also going to go high okay so this is known as bull market bull market means like this is a time period when the you know stock market is performing really well when investors are willing to invest money when you know the sentiment among the investors is really high okay so this is known as a bull market so like you know we have <clears throat> two concepts bull market and bearish market okay bull means when it is performing really high profit is being generated you know the sentiment among investors is high they are willing to invest and at the same time bear market or bearish market is a tendency where like people speculate that like you know certain companies are going to make losses then like you know their uh, uh, like you know market share or their valuation may go down so at that point of time the investors are not willing to invest into the share of this particular market so what has happened uh, what happens the you know uh, the uh, the securities market at that point of time go little low so that is known as bearish market okay bull and bear are opposite to one another uh, this is uh, used in the concept of you know uh, like uh, exchange market or securities market okay so you might have heard about the name of two i mean you know exchange markets uh, one is bombay stock exchange then we have national stock exchange okay we have nifty 50 and we also have you know uh, like a, a sensex so these are the indicators these are the indicators of the stock market okay so companies see bull markets in which usually a lot of investors a uh, lot of investor money is chasing stocks and causing them to be overhauled as an opportunity to collect the necessary funds for their growth okay so when bull market is there many investors are you know purchasing shares and and this opportunity is taken by the companies to raise more markets so that like you know they can uh, they can expand the uh, i mean like they can expand their business operations they can have different verticals in their company okay so notably a lot of companies that raised funds through ipo this year such as zomato PTM etc are loss making okay so at the same time like you know there are huge companies in India that have raised you know huge amount of money from the stock market and like you know the um, the valuation or the stock prices of, of you know uh, of the shares of these companies have gone down and many of these companies have made huge losses some of the examples are Zomato and PTM okay so they have become loss making companies this puts investors who have invested in these IPOs at the risk of huge losses if the prices prices of these shares witness a sharp correction okay so for instance PTM has lost more than one third of its value since it was listed for trading okay since the time PTM was listed for trading it has lost more than one third of its value let's consider earlier its value was 100 or 99 so it has lost 33 percent of its value now like you know 
means only two third of its value is remaining. So that's why SEBI has come. Uh, so SEBI believes that the new regulation will ensure that the promoters of companies will have more skin in the game. Its price band rule, on the other hand, seems to be aimed to tackle the trend among companies of setting a narrow price band for their issues. Okay, so this is the thing. With this, now let us move a little further to understand more about this topic. Okay, so will the new regulations help? Okay, so SEBI has come up with new regulations. So will these regulation help? I mean like will, will it have positive impacts? Okay, so here the SEBI's new rules have been widely welcomed for trying to protect retail investors from risk in the uh, in the booming IPO market okay so retail investors are saying that like this is a welcome move this is a right move that was taken by the uh, that was taken by the SEBI in this case okay however some fear that the new rules may hinder the raising of fresh capital by companies to fuel growth okay some people are also of the concern that like these rules are going to hamper the way that new companies were you know raising fund from the uh, from the securities market okay so this is the thing for instance mandating companies to be specific about how they will use the money that they collect through ipos can affect flexibility as business conditions can change fast in the real world Further, the restriction on anchor investors can affect liquidity in the market as many large investors may not be willing to hold their investment over 90 days and thus decide to completely abstain from participating in the IPO. Okay. So one of the things that mandates, you know, uh, these heavy rules are that the companies have to mention for which purpose they are going to use the money. And at the same time, uh, these new regulations have put some restriction on the anchor investors also. Like once anchor investors invest their money, they have to keep their money parked in the same fund for about 90 days. Only after 90 days, they will be allowed to withdraw their money. So uh, this may, um, this you know, uh, means like uh, this may hamper or like this this may somehow bring some you know changes in uh, in the thinking of the anchor investors so they may not be willing to invest their mon uh, money in the ipos okay so there are many critics about it okay some critics also raise the question of whether sebi should be trying to handhold investors at all when it comes to making investment decisions okay so people are saying like sebi is a regulatory body but like investors should be having you know free will in investing like you know they should be in a position to decide when to invest how much to invest when to take out the money but like this is going to uh, this particular regulation is going to handhold like it is going to direct the investors like you know for how long they are going to keep money if they, if they you know think of investing the thing okay so this is the thing i mean like uh, these regulations i mean like will these regulations help yes the answer is both yes and no yes in the sense like if it plays well it is going to help and like no in the sense like people have a lot of criticism uh, criticism about it if those crit criticism come out to be true then in that case like it may not help much okay so it is only time that is going to decide like you know how these rules are going to be effective okay so with this now let us move to the next topic and in this topic we will talk about cognac tribe okay so cognac tribe are our tribal people they are tribal population and these people are uh, or these people reside in the state of nagaland Recently, there was a case that, you know, few elite armed forces personnel have carried out some, some kind of, you know, investigation over there and they have, you know, uh, they have uh, killed, I mean, like it has led to killing of 13 people from the Cognac tribe. And since then, the Cognac people have been 
आई मीन प्रोटेस्टिंग अगेंस्ट दी आर्म फोर्सेस स्पेशल पावर्स एक्ट दैट इज इन प्लेस इन द स्टेट ऑफ नागालैंड एंड द कोनियक ट्राइब पीपल हैव बीन डिमांडिंग जस्टिस फॉर देयर ब्रदरहुड मींस दे हैव बीन डिमांडिंग जस्टिस फॉर द पीपल हु हैव बीन किल्ड बाय द आर्म फोर्सेस पर्सनल्स एंड द कोनियक ट्राइब पीपल दे यू नो दे हैव एन एसोसिएशन आल्सो कोनियक एसोसिएशन और कोनियक यूनियन दे हैव यू नो वेस्ट प्रोटेस्ट so uh, so they are in protest and they are demanding that the ministry of home affairs should withdraw the armed forces special powers act from the state of nagaland but recently the ministry of home affairs have taken a decision that they are going to extend the operation of the armed forces special powers act for another 6 months so the konyak union and the konyak people at large feel that like you know this is uh, this is uh, uh, this is you know adding salt to the wound okay this is adding salt to the wound so this is the thing in this light we need to understand about what is armed forces special powers act okay armed forces special powers act is an act enacted by the parliament of india in 1950 and this act is in operation in many states in india four northeastern states and uh, and the state of jammu and kashmir now jammu and kashmir uh, you know is a union territory but like the armed forces special powers act is in operation in some of the states in northeast and at the same time you know there are two states from northeast they had that have already withdrawn uh, you know the armed forces special powers act from from their state and many northeastern states are demanding that the armed forces special powers act must be repealed okay armed forces special powers act must be repealed and like you know they say like this particular act you know leads to gross violation of human rights in these states and at the same time the central government and the ministry of home affairs feel that like you know many of these areas that are under the armed forces special powers act are disturbed areas and this particular law which is armed forces special powers act this is put in place in those areas that are considered as disturbed areas okay that are disturbed areas okay so on one hand the you know people of the state of nagaland demand that like this particular act should be repealed it it should be taken away and on the other hand the central government thinks that like you know this uh, the entire state of nagaland or some territory of it is disturbed so this is important that we should have the apspa in place so that the armed forces personnel are given sufficient weapon with them to tackle you know the disturbances in those areas okay so this is uh, this is uh, this is the thing okay so if you read this article you should i mean like understand what is afspa since when it is in place in which states of india the armed forces special powers act is in operation and from which state it has been repealed and like why people are demanding to repeal this act and like why the central government is not repealing the act from these states altogether okay so with this we will move to the next topic now in this topic we will understand about the geopolitics that is in place between the united states of america on one hand and russia on other hand okay russia used to be ussr so ussr was a very big body there were many countries i mean like you know it was a very big uh, like one of the biggest countries at that point of time but like in 1991 the ussr has disintegrated and many countries has come out from the ussr okay so like one of the country that has come out uh, from ussr is ukraine russia is also was also a part of ussr but now the ukraine is a sovereign country and russia feels that like ukraine has been an i mean like you know has been a former member of the ussr so it is more close to russia but like the geopolitics in ukraine has 
changed and like you know the people in ukraine or like the, the government in ukraine they you know have their more tilt towards the united states of america than russia okay so here russia is of the view that like you know its territory russian territory you know should be safeguarded and like you know russian neighborhood should also be devoid of the influence from the west okay the western countries in, including the united states of america and its nato allies okay nato stands for north atlantic treaty organization the united states of america and nato allies okay allies they have some influence influence in the in the former ussr uh, you know countries means like uh, those countries that were part of former ussr so one of the country is ukraine okay so recently we have witnessed some tensions between russia and ukraine so russia is demanding that the united states of america or its nato ally should not think of expanding the nato okay north atlantic treaty organization to an extent that hampers the peace and security in russia okay and at the same time the united states of america us president joe biden he thinks that like you know nato should be expanded okay so they are of the view that nato should be expanded and let us discuss what is nato okay nato stands for north atlantic treaty organization it is a regional grouping of countries that have you know uh, so like uh, this particular grouping is a defense grouping it is a security grouping and these countries have come together and they have signed uh, a particular treaty and in this treaty there are some clauses one of the clauses you know article 5 and this article talks about collective security okay under this article it is mentioned that like a threat to attack on one of the country will be considered as a threat to attack to all the countries that are part of the nato or an attack in one of the country that are uh, that is part of nato will be considered as an attack to all the members of nato okay so this gives a collective defense mechanism to the members of nato okay so that's why the european union and united states of america canada and other countries that are part of nato so they have a very strong okay regional presence very strong security mechanism okay but on the other hand russia russia is a part of the united nations security council usa is also a part of U, uh, united nations security council similarly china is also a member of it okay they are p5 members okay so these countries have already you know huge power but like this uh, this geopolitical you know game is in play now and now in geneva the president of russia mr vladimir putin and the president of united states of america joe biden they are going to meet okay in geneva so they are going to meet and they are going to exchange talk on certain issues and still they have to you know take decisions related to ukraine crisis and the nato expansion okay they have to take decisions on these matters so now we have to wait and watch how the talk goes and like you know what happens thereafter okay so this is just a you know this is just a i mean like a intro introductory or information article but i have talked about the you know in depth geopolitics that is in place in this particular region okay so with this now let us move okay uh, let us move to the next topic okay this topic is about sundarbans and the man animal conflict okay you know sundarban tiger reserve is one of the protected areas in india and in this particular tiger reserve we have huge number of tigers that are residing okay Sundar sundarbans tiger reserve has huge forest cover and many of the human habitations are very close to the forest cover of the sundarban tiger reserve okay so what is happening now because of the winter season okay or 
because of you know fight between the tigers uh, related to you know territorial i mean like you know uh, control i mean tigers fight among themselves to ascertain their control over the territory so some of the tigers you know come out of the forest area and they start wandering so recently it has been witnessed that there has been multiple scenarios in this article they have mentioned four scenarios okay there has been multiple scenarios where tigers have come out of the forest and they have entered into the human habitation many forest guards and officials they are trying to and they have been trying to you know capture the tigers tigers so that like you know the tigers can be put back into the uh, into the tiger reserve okay so in this scenario what happens the it becomes very difficult for the forest guards to tranquilize the tigers and to rescue the tigers and and put them back into their habit, uh, habitat so this article talks about you know those forest areas where it has been uh, where it has been witnessed that there was man animal conflict okay they have mentioned some of those areas and you know these forest guards or like you know forest uh, officers they are using some of the methods like they are using trap cages tranquilizer teams nylon nets drones water cannons and chili bombs they are using these things to rescue the tigers to put the tigers back to their reserve so this is the thing so what is the you know next thing that you need to do after reading this article after under understanding this you need to understand that like you know tiger reserves are protected areas you need to locate where is sundarban tiger reserve located okay you need to understand about the geographical location you need to understand about you know the tiger reserves at large okay and you need to read about some protected areas so that will help you in understanding these things and at the same time you should look for you know different species of tiger that we find in india and at the same time you, we should also study about you know the various tiger species that are found around the world and what are their iucn status means like iucn stands for international union for conservation of nature so iucn maintains a red list okay and according to this particular red list you know they uh, like re remark a particular species to be under certain threat category okay so iucn red list has seven different lists uh, seven different you know categories and out of these seven categories four categories are very important okay vulnerable category endangered category critically endangered category okay and near threatened category so these are the you know categories that are very important so whenever any particular species comes into news you should look forward to understand what is the iucn status of this particular species this will help you to answer questions in the prelims exam and when we talk about you know man animal conflict so there can be question in the uh, means exam as well related to man animal conflict like you know man tiger conflict man elephant conflict like that okay so what should be the way forward what we should do to address you know these issues you know that, that like you know the primary reason between man animal conflict is you know encroachment up, upon the habitat of these animals you know by the human beings because like you know human population is continuously rising and uh, the population of the carnivores like tiger they are you know reducing day by day so i mean these tigers you know do not have a uh, proper i mean like you know adequate area to reside so that's why sometimes they venture into the human habitations okay so with this we will no move to the next topic so this topic is about dark genome okay so we will understand what is dark genome so this is a topic which is important for the science and technology section for the prelims examination okay in prelims exam they ask many questions uh, and like you know in 2021 we have witnessed that upsc has asked maximum of its questions from the biotechnology section under science and technology so this topic is also important under biotechnology or biology uh, you know area so that's why you should understand this thing okay 
so here over here you can see okay this is just an image of a genome okay so like they have painted it little dark uh, to just you know make it sure like you know uh, that like you uh, you take it as dark genome okay so let us understand what is dark genome dark genome is dna that is outside our genes okay so like uh, dark genomes are dna that is outside our genes and what has happened i mean like you know recently the scientists have started investigating the dark genome and they have identified recent uh, you know and the the investigation have helped them in identifying the evolved protein coding for the proteins that are associated with schizophrenia and bipolar disorders okay schizophrenia and bipolar disorders are mental disorders that people face i mean like you know these are mental disorders people who have bipolar disorder i mean like you know sometimes they are balanced sometimes you know they act irrationally okay so bipolar means like you know their mind is is not in balanced situation and schizophrenia is is again a mental you know disorder so dark genome uh, you know have evolved proteins and uh, these dark genomes will help in identifying like which proteins are you know associated with schizophrenia and which are associated with bipolar disorders so this dark genome is going to be helpful in that matter this particular research is published in molecular psychiatry okay this research is published in molecular psychiatry and the researchers say that the newly discovered proteins can be used as biological indicators to distinguish the two conditions and identify patients more prone to the psychosis psychosis means mental disorder okay so this uh, the dark genome will help in identifying the proteins that are you know uh, like uh, that are responsible for schizophrenia and that are responsible for bipolar diseases and this research was published in Mo molecular psychiatry and so uh, like you know so let us see like uh, what happens in future so i mean you know in science and technology the uh, investigations discovery and uh, you know a lot of i mean uh, a lot of things are happening diagnosis of diseases are happening and people are uh, you know coming up with different methods to understand what causes which disease and at the same time people are trying to come up with you know solutions to address these diseases with this we will move to the next topic okay now let us understand what do we mean by prehistoric pollution okay so this topic talks about that the pollution is not happening only today the pollution has been a major cause for the earth since ages and we have identified you know certain areas in the in the globe where we find the evidence of prehistoric pollution so this article talks about that algal bloom that result from anthropogenic pollution can have harmful effects on the ecosystem okay so algal blooms happen from the anthropogenic effect anthropogenic means the you know the anthropogenic pollution means the pollution that is caused by the human being because of human activities okay human activities lead to pollution and this pollution leads to algal blooms and these algal blooms may have harmful effects on the ecosystem okay so here the in this picture you can see you know this is algal bloom the green ones that you can see this is algal bloom and a recent study in penis okay penis finds that this is not only a problem of the industrial era means this you know uh, the pollution or algal uh, algal bloom is not not a thing of this industrial era only but it has been in place since ages okay in the sediment cores from lake amal amal tilt uh, tilt lun in guatemala they find hints of former presence of cyanobacteria okay which are typical of algal blooms in the pre uh, pre columbian mayan pre period okay so 
in this particular location which is lake amatitlan okay lake amatitlan it is located in guatemala okay so guatemala i guess it is a country in, in uh, south america okay so in guatemala they have i mean you know they have identified a place which is lake amalti titlan and in this place they have found the presence of cyanobacteria and these cyanobacteria are typical for algal brooms and these cyanobacteria are believed to be belonging to pre-columbian mayan period okay so what do we mean by pre-columbian mayan period so for this you need to study about the geological time scale of the earth okay so if you study the geological time scale you will understand about different periods i mean like you know period in itself is a is a i mean like you know categorization of time for example like nowadays we talk about seconds minutes hours days weeks month year so this is how we categorize time like a smaller unit of time to bigger unit of time a smaller means second minute then bigger unit may be hour day then week month year okay so like this is how uh, we define the time period okay to understand the things on our day to day uh, life but like if we talk about the history of the earth if we talk about the history of evolution of the earth okay so earth uh, you know the big bang happened 13.6 billion years ago and earth is considered to be 4.3 billion year old okay so since then lot of you know activities has happened on the surface of the earth and because of it you know there have been various stages of evolution of life on earth so if you study the stages of evolution of life on earth for that you need to study about a particular time scale that time scale is known as geological time scale okay this uh, time scale will help you to understand about the geology of the earth so here i have included a picture of a geological time scale okay so here you can see cenozoic mesozoic paleozoic and precambrian okay so here i mean like i'm not going to discuss in detail about geological time scale because it's going to take about an hour because it's a very big topic we need to discuss in detail okay so in your free time or uh, you can study about the geological time scale or you may have already studied about it in your geography classes okay so with this now let us move to the next topic for the day <clears throat> okay so here we will understand about prelims practice question so let us take a question and let us understand what is its answer the question is with reference to india didwana kachaman and sargol kachaman sargol and khatu are the name of okay here they have given you know name of four things one is didwana then we have kachaman sargol and khatu they are saying these are names of like they have given option glaciers mangrove areas ramsar sites saline lakes the correct answer for this question is saline lakes and most of these places are located in the state of rajasthan okay if you just google their names you will come across this thing okay so correct answer for this question is saline lakes so here you know this question gives us an understanding that upsc can ask term related question term means you know like didwana means like places here in this uh, thing they have you know asked the name of saline lakes so in next year they may ask you know name of some other things also so whenever you come across you know some unique names in news or something you know in unique places you should identify what they are where they are located so this will help you in answering some questions in the prelims exam okay so that's all that i had to discuss with you for the day thank you so much everyone for attending the session i hope you have a great day ahead thank you